Manish Johan is asking, what was your most memorable meal and who was it with? You know what? I, I still remember one of the most incredible meals was um, uh, I had gone back to India. Um, Vivek and I, we, had, we, we got married over here and we went back to India after quite some time. And uh, Vivek is from Jaipur. And we landed and his brother came to pick us up because we were driving from Delhi to Jaipur. And this was in the middle of the night and we stopped in one of the dhabas, which are like the Indian, uh, you know, truck stops. That food was incredible because I think it was a couple of, not only the food was so delicious, but it was the first meal that we were having after landing in India. And we had come after a really long time and um, we, had, we had just gotten married. So we were going back for our reception. So I think it was just the combination of everything, which was incredible. Here's another question from Sonal Adha. She asks, I'd love to hear your take on what makes Indian food unique among world cuisines. What is your favorite Indian comfort food dish? Sonal, my favorite uh, Indian comfort dish is pretty much dal chawal or khichdi, which I think is a universal answer for anybody who's grown up in India. It's just, it's comforting. It's the chicken soup for our soul. Uh, to me, I think what makes Indian cuisine absolutely unique uh, in the world uh, is, is its rich, um, heritage and uh, in terms of heritage what i mean to say is how the entire world has influenced indian cuisine right um if we talk about uh, you know uh, north indian food which is you know most known around the world has this entire persian influence to it right um if you look at you know there is Goan cuisine, which has Portuguese influence to it. There is um, Pondicherry, which has French influence to it, right? There is Tangra cuisine, which has Chinese influence to it. So Indian food is such an incredible melting pot, right? Where they have been uh, flavors from all over the world, uh, influences from along the world, which has resulted in this absolutely amazing, delicious, flavorful uh, food. Um, which has a really, really rich history. So I think that's what makes Indian food stand apart. But of course, I'm biased. I am like completely biased. Indian food is the best. We, can. we, we are allowed to be biased, right? We're Punjabi. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's a question from my good friend and film critic, Kirk S. Fernwood. Hi, Kirk. Uh, so he asks, love you on Food Network, Manit. Okay, as possibly the only Westerner in this conversation. No, you're actually not the only Westerner in this conversation. If I was looking to try my hand at cooking an Indian dish, what would be the easiest one to start with? Mind you, I probably belong to worst cooks in America, not Iron Chef. <laughs> hey Kirk, uh, I am first of all, uh, I am so impressed that you want to go ahead and try Indian food. It is actually not as difficult as people think uh, it is. Uh, what I would, um, Darpan is saying chai, Darpan I do agree <laughs> with you, that is a great idea. But um, you know, um, you can get into Indian cooking by making some really, really easy, easy steps. Kebabs are a great way to go, you know, get into Indian food because that's literally marinated and grilled meat. And especially now with the grill season on, you can just marinate these beautiful, uh, you know, your favorite meats and just grill it. Um, but also, if you go to my Instagram, I do have some IG uh, TV, um, which I have done with like some really simple ways. You can take frozen corn, you can make a sabzi or a saute out of it with Indian flavors. Um, I recently did, um, you know, uh, on, on the Kelly Clarkson show, uh, I actually showed Nick Jonas how to make a very easy version of a chicken tikka masala uh, using marinara sauce, because there's nothing with Indian food like marinara sauce, right? But, you know, it is easy. Try it and let me know how easy it is. And then, I'll, then I will direct you to more complicated recipes. Awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, there is another question. Sangeeta has a question. Who? Sangeeta has her hand up. Sangeeta. Oh, Sangeeta. Go ahead, Sangeeta. Uh, Manit, I'm absolutely enjoying uh, you, your personality. You're just such a ball of energy and very inspiring. I'm so happy I joined this call today. Thank you, Sonny. 
Thank so, you. Um, question for you. How do we get our kids to take an interest in Indian cooking here? Uh, you know what? Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I'm a dork when it comes to getting my kids involved because I, I compare everything. I compare life to cooking, right? Uh, to me, when I am uh, cooking, uh, my son is, I mean, he's five, so he's not that much into cooking. But then I go ahead and I uh, start making uh, desserts. I'm like, do you want to make a cake, right? The cake will have uh, gulab jamun makes uh, appearance. Rasmalai makes appearance, gajar halwa makes appearance, right? And they are usually tasting it. So, um, and there's a lot of colorful icing which is going because to me, um, I mean, kids are very sensory, right? And that's how it starts. So the next time I'm in the kitchen, they come up to me and they're like, okay, what are you making? How can we get, uh, you know, more involved in this? Um, we, we just like with my daughter, she's more in, she's more uh, into uh, how she can record it and how she can put emojis in it. And I'm like, that's fine. You cook with me. And the next step would be that. And over the time I've seen her get more involved in cooking. So I think it is just a matter of, Hey, do you want to join rather than just pushing them to do this? Like right now, She's making rotis, which are in each and every shape of, like how I got her into rotis was, hey, this is edible Play-Doh. And you can also go ahead and roll it out. So now rotis are in shape of Australia and, and you know, uh, Italy or each and every shape of country uh, in the world. But it's fun. And then I give them cutters. I'm like, go ahead, make a heart-shaped uh, roti or something. So I think it's just speaking their conversation, which would be... Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. You have to keep on pushing them. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, is watching, uh, I get so stressed out, like watching Chopped. Is it as stressful as it looks like on TV? Because I'm almost having panic attacks watching Rebecca, it's, people. Um, it's not as stressful as you see it on TV. It's a hundred times more stressful. Oh, right? gosh. It is. Oh. It is crazy we've been doing it for 12 years now and till date i am like oh my god like i have my heart pounding i am screaming with the last 10 seconds i'm like come on get it on the plate if it's not on the plate we can't taste it it is very stressful um and um competing is even more stressful right i, I was wondering did, yeah when I you were competing that was it is. crazy it is crazy. It is crazy. You've got to put your, you're a judge. So you've got to kind of show some bravado, but inside you're <laughs> like, why the hell did I agree to this? <laughs> this is so stressful. So yeah, it is, it's, it's a lot more stressful. It's not as stressful as you think it is. It is exponentially more. Which cuisine outside of Indian cuisine is your uh, second favorite, I would say? To me, any cuisine is incredible. I think as long as there has been due respect given to the ingredients uh, and the product, I, I love anything and everything. And uh, I know that I've not even scratched the surface of trying foods around the world, uh, but it just astounds me and amazes me whenever I go to new countries and I try different flavors. Uh, it just... It blows, it blows my mind what people can do with food. It's just so exciting. Do you ever like to go out to eat? Like, you know, I'm sure you do. But again, you know, given that you work around food, uh, you know, what happens to people is they, they don't want to, you know, go out to eat uh, fancy restaurants and such. Do you like to? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, but I think as I'm getting older, uh, you know, Vivek and I being in the same industry, whenever we go into restaurants, we kind of tend to analyze what's going on or what they, what people are doing good or what we would do or etc. Uh, I mean, I know I used to be, when I used to be younger, I used to be so obnoxious. I would go out with my sister and brother-in-law and to a fancy place and I would pick up the plate to see, ki, oh, this is Rosenthal. Oh, very cool, right? Uh, I have now... Um, I have reached that stage where I, I curb doing that. I, I just, I realize I have started living more in the moment. So this moment will get a hundred percent of my time and I'm going to enjoy it thoroughly. 
I will not, uh, and that's why, you know, when I was requesting you to send me, you know, the Zoom information just before the event, because four days, four days uh, before, I will not be able to analyze it, because to me, it's important to live in this moment. Where do you get the inspiration for, for items on your menu? I mean, you know, I, I, I like to cook also, and I always have a tough time deciding what I'm going to put on the menu. So how do you, where do you get the inspiration for your menu? It's teamwork. It's teamwork. I, um, I get inspiration from my travels, from people that I work, but it's, in, it's like, it's teamwork. Right now we have this, you know, young kid who's our chef de cuisine, uh, Marino, who is, you know, who's from LA, uh, uh, but he, you know, he's traveled the world. He's got a Mexican heritage, uh, loves Indian food. And, uh, and he's come up with this new menu, which is like just blowing things out of water, right? The fact that he started putting steaks in the menu and started serving steaks along with vindaloo, like people are just going crazy. And that to me, I think is very, very important to let your team, um, you know, uh, partake or not, not, not only partake, but to lead the charge when it comes to creativity. Because what I love about cooking is the creative aspect of it, right? It's not that, uh, you know, every day you go and do the same thing or follow somebody's recipe. I don't enjoy that. So for me to expect my team to be doing that is not fair. So it's, it's a teamwork. I mean, everybody contributes, everybody tastes, everybody says what works what doesn't work um, and we grow together as a team because a rising tide raises all ships right just me uh, rising is not going to help right all of us have to grow together and that I think is what is the at least in my life has been a recipe for for success awesome I have a question from my good friend Shashi Sharma on Facebook live he's asking me what do you think about Indian fusion? I think you, I already know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer. I think it takes away from the authenticity, but I think I'll let you. Um, Shashi, we can have uh, hours and hours of conversation about what, what is authentic. Uh, what is authentic Indian food? Uh, chicken tikka masala? Not really. Naan? You think naan is authentic India? No, it isn't. I mean, it's, it's come, it's, you know, it's, it's the entire Persian influence. Kebabs? Kebabs are not uh, authentic Indian. Um, to me, what is authentic is what you make uh, a dish. What is authentic to you? To me, what is authentic is the fact that I travel the world and I get inspiration from around the world, right? So, um, so that is what I am true to. I am true to, I am honest to, I'm authentic to who I am as a person. To me, I grew up in India. That's where my roots are from. But my home is Nashville right now. So I honor both the places where I am from, where I am. And that is what is authentic to me. So whenever anybody, I've, I've had heated discussions as heated as curry powder, uh, uh, you know, uh, about authentic Indian food, because, because authentic Indian food, like Chinese, Indian Chinese, who all of us are obsessed about, it is because of the Chinese influence, right? I mean, you go to Goa, uh, okay, let's talk about pao bhaji. Where do you think pao is from? Uh, batata, where do you think potatoes are from? Um, tomatoes, where do you think tomatoes are from? Chilies, which are such an integral part of India, are not authentically from India. So I think fusion is very important in, um, in evolution of any cuisine. Uh, and I think it should be embraced. I don't think that it should be treated as a dirty word. Uh, because you become richer learning from other cuisines, learning from other people. Uh, and that's what has been my approach. There are other people with different approaches, which is completely fine. But my approach has been learn from the world. That's how you grow as a person. My question is, <laughs> your friends and family, are they just like so intimidated to call you over for a meal? No, I would love to call you for a meal. <laughs> you, know, you know that Hindi saying, ghar ki, ghar ki murgi dal barabar? That, that is basically what it is, right? <laughs> no, nobody is intimidated. I mean, like, to me, I really appreciate, I, I appreciate being invited to somebody's house and somebody cooking from their heart because, you know, that emotion and love that you taste in somebody's cooking, 
there is no restaurant food that can ever, ever, ever top that, right? Well, you have an invitation from Washington, D.C. Fantastic. I Next time I'm over there, I will, I will connect with you because my life is pretty much on Instagram. So um, I was there last year. I have great friends in D.C. So uh, I was there for Jose Andres' uh, capital food fight. Um, uh, you know, so next time I'm there, I would, I would love to. I would love to invite myself over to your place. Awesome. awesome. And I would love, love. I mean, that is like, that's one of, to me, that is one of the most... Um, selfless acts of kindness is sharing your food uh, and your history of how you've learned how to cook uh, with with people so thank you i really appreciate that invitation and don't be surprised when i take you up on i it. would love to see you at my doorstep sunny i have yeah. a question yeah hey uh, Mani, this is siraj um, i i spent two years in ranchi before you were born oh my and God. I have this fond memories of, of the food and, and the smell and, and, and the mitais and all those things. Um, for two years I was there and, uh, and the songs and, and all those things. So tell us a little bit about your childhood there and, and, and the sights and the smells and, and food, whatever you do. So Ranchi, one of my favorite memories of Ranchi is every Sunday, uh, dad and I on his scooter, we would go to Doranda uh, Sabzi uh, Mandi. Uh, which was the the farmer's market right so when i came over here and everybody would be like oh my god farmer's market i'm like that, that was the only market that we knew in india uh, but but that was a favorite memory like just the fact you know things like seasonal cooking everybody talks about over here seasonal cooking was the only form of cooking growing up right Red gajar you would get for one week in December, all the gajar halwa mom would make, put it in the freezer and we would pray that the electricity wouldn't go. And then there was a small part of us which would have our fingers crossed that the electricity goes so that we could like gouge on the gajar ka halwa. But, uh, but that's what it is. I mean, but thank, thank you. you so much for taking me down memory lane. That was, that was really kind of you. So now there is... I had a question from Sri Mirajkar and it's gone from my screen. Eric Colon is asking me, maybe one day we could meet in Mississippi and have some soul food listening to the blues. That sounds like fun. That's a great idea. Incredible. Uh, and then there's another one from Sunny Tucker. He's asking me, I was at Johan's Ale House in February. Missed seeing you by an hour or so. Great experience. That's always good to hear. Thank you. <laughs> I call uh, you know what, uh, what what I call February, uh, February twenty twenty. I call it BC. I call it before COVID. Priya Dhanda has a question. Uh, she's raised her hand. Go off. Uh, go off mute, please. Here's my thing. You know, when you have your restaurant, you have the kits that are coming out. I want to be able to like get access to that. Number one, and the other thing is, um, you know, if you have any tips on anything when it comes to any type of cooking. I don't know. I'm just like wanting to get any knowledge you have. So uh, Priya, um, the kids, um, so basically when we closed, what we were doing was just trying to make sure that, you know, basically I can't sit still. So, so I just was trying to figure out ways that we could kind of work on getting uh, some kind of, um, some kind of source of revenue so that I could start hiring people back, which was very important for me. Uh, we are working on it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more professional than, you know, than what we did. So, um, but that being said, uh, if you send us an email at uh, events at um, uh, chauhannashville.com, I'm sure that I can make a kit for you. When it comes to your second question of how to approach food, uh, the only the only advice that I can uh, give you is approach food with a complete abandonment of caution, right? What's the most that will happen? It won't be good. Great. You've learned a lesson on what not to do, right? I, I am an avid reader. I get all of, I go to the library and I come back with all of these cookbooks, right? I learn about uh, foods that um, I'm not familiar with. Uh, the other day there was this gorgeous, there is this gorgeous um, uh, Middle Eastern cookbook, which is called The Bottom of, Bottom of the Pot. 
uh, and it had incredible bread recipes, right? So I started making those breads, but I started putting Indian fillings in it. So um, my whole thing is follow recipes, right? Follow it once and then you will see what you like about it and what you don't like about it and then make it your own. Um, I always tell people it's easy to follow recipes, um, but recipes don't, don't add soul to the food. So take a recipe and put your signature on it. Put a, you know, put your signature as to, you know, you, you're making focaccia. I remember at CIA, I had just come from India and we were making focaccia and our teacher said, go ahead and make your own toppings. And the next day I showed up with bindi masala and dal, right? And my, my instructor thought I was completely crazy and we made it and it was the best tasting focaccia he ever had. That is it. Put your own signature on it. That's the only way that you are going to take a good dish and make it a memorable dish. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. <clears throat> so now <laughs> uh, we have Arthi Mamidela who is unable to, for some reason, either type or come on the uh, chat and, uh, you know, even turn her camera on. So she's asking me and I don't know, I, you know, I'll let you decide. She is asking, what are the challenges as an Indian woman you have gone through in such a competitive food industry and how did you overcome them? Um, this can inspire other women who are stuck and unable to progress. So I see what she's asking me. You know, there may be other women who want to, you know, proceed. And um, Aarti, there is absolutely no... Um... I have, I've, I've been very blessed that I've had an incredible support system, right? Right from my parents to my sibling, uh, to my husband, to my kids. Uh, they've been absolutely, incredibly, unconditionally supportive, right? Um, but one of my biggest things has always been any time I've ever had doubt in something that I can't do. Um, my older sister, who I, I've always been a complete pest to, you know how younger sisters are, right? Um, yeah. She would always be my my strongest till date. She is she is my biggest um, cheerleader. So if ever I feel na ki I can't do it, and I'll call her up and I'll be like, I don't know if I can do it, and he's and she's like, uh, Who am I talking to? Right? You you can't do it. Of course you can do it. Right? And over the time that has almost made, that's made me believe that I can do anything, right? Um, and whenever I talk to, you know, a group of women, I always say that um, we, we in our hearts always question ourselves with these two words, can we, right? A long time ago, I switch those two words to we can, yeah. right? You have that in your mind, you will do it. As simple as that, okay? And the other thing which I have been, which I, and, and you have to work on it. It doesn't happen overnight, right? You keep on saying, you keep on repeating the mantra, you keep on repeating it in your mind. And to me, one of my biggest, biggest, um, uh, you know, aha moment was, what is the most that will happen? I'll fail. That's fine. At least I tried. At least I'm not going to live with the regret that I didn't try. Right? I competed on Iron Chef against Chef Morimoto. Chef Morimoto started his career the year I was born. Um, I came a respectable second among two people. Uh, I don't say that I lost. I'd say I came second among two people. But that's what it is. What's the most that happened? I lost, but what I gained was an incredible experience. Uh, what I gained was to be the first Indian and the only female Indian female chef to have ever been uh, competing on Iron Chef. It's not a small feat. So, um, uh, you know, failure doesn't, doesn't phase me. It doesn't worry me. It actually, I welcome failure because what I learned from failure is so, so much more valuable than I'll ever learn from my successes. Okay. I agree. That's a great answer. I appreciate it for answering that question. It's, it's like I really wanted other women to understand how it is, it is not easy to be there, but how you worked through that, that process and then how, how you shine from it. That is important for others to know so that they can, you, they can be encouraged from you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you.
Awesome. Um, so, Dine, do you want to answer, ask your question yourself or do you want me to uh, ask it for you? I think sure. you, you better ask it yourself. Okay. Um, Chef Mini, you kind of approach every challenge with these energy and your your attitude of positivity with COVID-19 you know the ideas of getting a meal on the table it's just evolving how do you see the restaurant industry sort of responding and changing wow uh, that is that's a heavy question first of all thank you so much for ordering the book that was really kind of you um, I um, the restaurant so this morning, um, I, I'm on the um, the CDC board of Nashville, which is the, the Convention and Tourism Board. Um, and uh, um, there was a doctor who was talking to us and um, he said something, he's like, hey, listen, this is the new normal. This is the new normal, okay? So wow. let's, not, let's not set, um, you know, we'll wait till Christmas, we'll wait till 2020, I mean, 2021, we'll wait till 20, this is the normal. This, these are the cards we've been dealt with. Now, how are we going to play the game? Okay. What is most important for us is uh, our team members, the safety of our team members and our safety of our guests. So uh, things have changed already. I mean, like no, um, no, uh, uh, nobody who's working for us can walk into the building without having their temperature taken, without filling a questionnaire. It's like clocking in. Okay. This is how things are changing. Uh, the way we are seating people, sanitizing um we have one person who's just dedicated to cleaning sanitizing that's it right so we realize that the restaurant industry has changed but the one thing which is really interesting that we've observed especially during the times we were closed is that takeouts have spiked mm -hmm. a lot of people are more comfortable eating at home so now we are making menus which are more conducive to being reheated for people to freeze it so we've got to change again I'm not cooking for myself, I'm cooking for my audience. So when my audience asks what they want, I, uh, you know, I cater to them. So you've got to, uh, you've got to listen, right? Which is in anything. It's not only in this industry, it's in, it's in any industry, it's in any relationship. The most, um, the biggest gift you can give yourself is listen to what people want, right? Um, and, and that I think is very important. So things are going to change. It's, I have accepted the fact that, um, you know, BC is never coming back, is never coming back. Yeah. Now I am smart enough to take this situation and make the best out of it. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. Thank you for the lovely answers, Manit. So I'm just asking people if they have any more questions, because I realized that We've exceeded the one hour limit and I think I'm having such a good yeah. time. I go on to tomorrow morning. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't, right? <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. You know, but, but we do realize that, you know, you must be tired and you probably need to rest. But I just want to ask you, um, what message would you have for little girls around the world looking to become chefs such as yourself? Uh, what should they do? What is the inspiration that, you know, you can throw their way? My biggest advice is follow your passion, right? And I don't mean only in terms of being a chef. I mean, you know, you, you want to be an astronaut, you want to be a fashion designer, you want to be a teacher, do what makes you happy. Because one of the biggest things about choosing a profession is that you need to be passionate about it because only then when you wake up in the morning it's not a drudgery it is something that you're excited about like after all of these years of me you know cooking or being a chef I still get up with this excitement of what does today hold for me you know what am I going to create today who am I going to meet today who am I going to connect with today who is what I love about um, about cooking is the fact that it is the greatest connector on this planet. You know, even through COVID, what are we seeing? We are seeing people connecting over cooking, be it making breads, oh God, like another bread video and I'm going to freak out, but making breads and sharing it on social media, it's a form of connection. 
right? So to me, that is what is important. I think young girls, uh, young girls, young children around the world need to figure out what they are passionate about because a profession is not a nine to five job anymore. It becomes your life. It becomes something that inspires you. It becomes something that connects you with the world. So find that passion and then go after it. Don't become a chef because you want to be on television because then the lack of passion is going to shine through. So just follow your passion. That is the best advice I've heard in a long time. Um, now, now uh, selfish question for myself. Uh, would you ever consider, you know, you've already acted in a film, in a Hallmark film, you said. Uh, would you ever consider, you know, working in a film which is like a sort of a biopic about you? And that's a serious question, and I'm not trying to apple polish you, right? It's a serious question. Why not? I mean, like, literally, I, I can't tell you. Um, so th I've got to tell you this really funny um, how I ended up in a Hallmark movie, right? Uh, that should be a chapter uh, in itself. So um, I was doing the Tournament of Champions in in LA, which was very, very stressful. 16 top chefs from around the country. We are competing against each other. Uh, I, I was quite the underdog. And I'm like, I'll show you because not enough people had seen me. So uh, we are having this, you know, so I'm re really stressed in between. I get an email that, uh, hey, um, uh, there is a show we are looking for a host. Are you interested? So immediately I forward it to my agent. I'm like, Cameron, make this happen. I don't care how. She calls me. I'm in between like stressed. I am going to compete. And she's like, hey, it's a scripted show. I'm like, everything is scripted. Get it for me. She's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. She's like, it's scripted. I'm like, everything is scripted. I get the contract. And that's the time I look at, I'm like, holy shit, did I say yes to a Hallmark movie? Uh, and, and I was like, I call up Vivek. He's like, so <laughs> you've never said no to anything, do it. And it was incredible. I mean, we were filming in the middle of winter in Winnipeg, where there was wind chill and it was like minus like 20, 30 degrees, whatever insane temperature is in Canada and Winnipeg in December. And, uh, you know, I made the be best friends and it was incredible and just saw a completely different uh, avatar of myself. So, yes, I never say no to anything um, because you never know what incredible journey. You know that um, uh, one of my favorite poems is The Road Not Taken, uh, you know, where the last uh, line is somewhere ages and ages hence. Uh, you know, I, I look back and see the road not taken. Um, and, and the gist is like, um, I got all the success because I took the ro road less traveled by. And, and I, Robert Frost, yes, absolutely. Uh, that one, um, and, and I believe in that. I believe in taking the paths which I've not been trodden on because the results or the waterfalls that you see at the end of it are usually the most incredible and the most rewarding. Do you realize Darpan is a writer and, uh, you know, he's on this call and I was, I dropped a subtle hint and I think he was the one who came back with Robert Frost. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, watching my back Darpan. I really enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, you know, a uh, I walked into that, didn't I? You guys set exactly, it up very well. Exactly, exactly. And I think, you know what, Darpan is, is we're going we're gonna to chat as soon as uh, the call is done. I'm pretty sure about it. He's going to go, hey, Sunny, listen, listen, buddy, listen. <laughs> I, I do have to say, I, I've been writing for a while. And uh, just last year, I started uh, writing a script where my goal is to have food as part of every scene. Um, keeping my fingers crossed, I'll let you know how it all develops. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It is. No, you know, right, I mean, like when I talk about it, the whole world talks about food, yeah. The whole world talks about food. And I think it just needs to have a little bit more, uh, you know, representation on, uh, you know, on mainstream. Like it shouldn't just be on food. It should be in mainstream life uh, as, gen you know, that's what, and again, I'm biased because
this is what I live, breathe, drink. Uh, so yeah, that's what it's all about. It is such a pleasure. I mean, I, I hate to call it a night, but I do realize that it's uh, been an hour and a half of pure joy. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. And by the way, I call this show the sunny side up, the sunny with the O. <laughs> <laughs> I call my show the sunny side up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my God. It was such a pleasure talking to y'all. Y'all. See, you're getting my Nashville, y'all, right? Yeah. You're from Nashville, Tennessee. So y'all. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you so much, everybody. Thank for you, coming. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank we you. love you more than you know, Manit. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you.